Hello, and welcome to this ANSYS discovery tutorial on getting started with the Move tool for geometry prep for simulation. The Move tool has several uses and applications, including but not limited to modifying existing designs by mating faces together, moving bodies or assembly as needed or with parameters or references. Uh, you could even copy or pattern features, bodies, or even assemblies. Similar to Pull, the Move tool has three basic parts to its operation. The first is what are you moving? Similar to pull, you can move faces and edges, but bodies or subassemblies might be selected more. Next is how are you moving it? We typically are translating in a direction or rotating around an axis, but advanced options include along a trajectory or radially about an axis. Lastly, where are we moving it to? Just like pull, you can dynamically drag, you can enter in a value, or set up a parameter, or select a reference. Once we understand these three parts, the Move tool is very intuitive and powerful to use. Let's get started. When you launch Discovery, please open the provided file, and you'll notice a mode along the bottom here. The default may be set to Model, Explore, or Refine, and that can be changed under File and Settings. The preferred mode for geometry prep is the model mode. You can turn on the move tool from the ribbon bar with the move tool here or the keyboard shortcut M or from the hex you can access the halo and the modeling triad and here in the upper right is the move tool. Once the move tool is on we'll see the heads up display or the HUD in front of us here and on the left hand side we have the tool guides and on the right hand side we have the options just like in pull. They're organized and pretty similar between move and pull. Uh, the first row is selection, and you can select geometry like faces and edges, or you can also select components. Uh, by default, we're moving it in a direction, and you can change that direction, but you could also move along a trajectory. You may want to reposition where the anchor is, or move radially, or about a fulcrum. Along the bottom, we have up to just like pull, and a rotational snap called orient to object. The options on the right allow you to redock and hide and show the different options. Uh, along the top are some to set up parameters and some different options down below uh, related to some specific cases like creating patterns or orientation uh, depending on how you are moving it. Some options may hide and show based on certain selections and setups from the left hand side. For additional information or a refresher on using the Move tool, you can press F1, or in the upper right, you can click on the Help icon to bring up the Overlay Help for Move. It is context sensitive, so you could hover over different things, and as you select and activate different uh, options, you may get different uh, instructions uh, along the Overlay Help panel. You can exit out of the overlay help by pressing escape or clicking the X in the upper right. Let's start with the basics of how to move something like we did for pull. If we zoom in here and select the face, we cannot just drag like we did for pull, we need to specify a direction. That direction can be one of the straight arrows for translating or one of the curved arrows for rotating. If we pick this arrow perpendicular to this face, it is now selected. I can then, in a separate click, drag and move this face, translating it back and forth. When I let go, there's a value there, and I can type in a number. And similar to pull, you'll notice that as I'm dragging, the neighboring faces are extending or trimming. So in this case, this move is just like a pull. Now, if I decide that I don't want to perform this operation, I can do an undo, just like we did for pull. And we'll shortly see how Move has many of the same functions as Pull, but let's take a look at some of the differences. Previously, when we wanted a different behavior when we pulled this face, we also selected the edges. There is a difference there. You'll notice that as I do this, the face is now staying the same size, similar to Pull, but with Pull, it created new walls. Now you'll actually see that as I move this, the angle of the faces on the side are changing as I maintain the size of this face. So moving a face with edges is like moving the face without changing the size of it and without creating new walls. Again, similar but different to pull. Another difference is curved faces. You might remember the pull tool changed the size of it 
by offsetting, but the move tool will allow me to either translate this hole in a direction, or I can pick one of these curved axes and rotate to a different orientation. If I want to rotate 90 degrees, I can click on an arrow and either type in a value or double click will snap that 90 degrees. Just like the pull tool, I could set up a ruler by selecting a direction and from the options panel, I can click ruler, click on a face or edge or any reference and either type in a value or set it up as a parameter to study. Similar to pull, I could also do an up to. I might want to move this face up to the neighboring face just like we did for pull. So a very similar operation there. Now let's take a look in a cross section where this workflow is very common. We might want to go into a cross section through this bolt and I could select these parallel faces here by holding control and scrolling through the model. Or it's also common to select the axis through the pin or the hole. So if I hold control and scroll my wheel, it will toggle to the hidden faces. And if I hover over that center and I keep spinning, now it's selecting the axis and I can select it from there. Now we want to enter section mode and that can be done from the design tab in the upper left or X for keyboard shortcut. If we go ahead and zoom in here, we can see that there are a number of issues uh, right in front of us. Here, the hole of this plate is not aligned to the bolt and the other hole. And down over here, there is no hole at all in this back piece. There's also a gap between the head and the bracket. And in, there could have been another part there or it's just out of position. And we may need to change the head without changing the whole bolt or we may want to move the entire bolt. So let's go ahead and take a look at working here in a cross section. Just like in pull, you want to select the edge of that hole. That's where the face is crossing over. And you'll notice that I can go ahead and move this up or down. If I want to snap it up to the bolt or the hole, I can select that direction, choose up to, and I can pick a reference like the bolt. In the case of mating up the head of the bolt, I may not want to change the positioning on the other side. In that case, I want to move these faces so I can control select them. And the difference with pull is the pull would change the thickness of this by pulling them in opposite directions, but move allows me to translate them together. Now you'll notice that the move tool is snapped to the center of those two faces, and that may not be exactly where I need it to be. I want to snap this face up to that one, but if I were to do an up to from here, notice that it's not positioned correctly. So what I could do if I undo here is drag the move handle by the ball at the center and drop it on the face where I want it to snap from. Now I can pick my direction, use the up to command and pick this face and those are going to be mated together. Now I wanna zoom out and show you that if I were to edit this bolt now, you'll notice that the other bolts are updating. Now, it just so happened that the other bolts also had a space, and by editing one, the other one's updated because they are instances. When we want to move all of the instances, we select either faces or the solid. You'll notice if I triple click on the solid and move it, they all move. If I want to move it independently, I can select it as a component from the tool guides, it's selected as an orange box and you'll notice only that one moves. Let's take a look where else components can be really useful. If we head back out to 3D, we may want to move certain things around in a certain manner. For example, on the top here, I may want to move this top plate up and down, but maintain the interface and change the height of this post. Here, in either select mode, I can actually do this with a box select. If I drag from left to right, which selects only things in the box, here I'm able to select multiple things. I'm able to select bodies and faces. There's actually a lot of faces at the interface between these two parts. Now I can change the height of the post and move this top plate and the height of the pin up and down at the same time. 
Now I might want to snap it and I could either drag the move handle down to here or there's actually a tool guide that lets me pick something for the move anchor to attach to. Now I could go ahead and either use an up to command or enter a value to snap it down to the height and it's maintained that interface all in one action. Now I may want to move this head here and that can be done in a few different ways. Depending on how many objects we have, one way to select a few objects is with triple clicking. I could triple click on this body, hold control, triple click on another and another, and it's going to select them all and I can move them as a group. But in some cases, there may be a lot of parts that I need to move. And sometimes a box select may grab other things nearby that I don't want to move. So in this case, we can often make use of the structure tree. In some cases, we can just pick the subassembly right here. In other cases, with a larger subassembly, one really easy method is to select one face on one of the bodies. And down in the lower right is a upward arrow for selecting parents. The first click, the parent of a face is a solid. With the second click, the parent of the solid is a component. That's just for that one body. And with another click, it has now selected up to the subassembly. Now I can select that arrow, drag down, and the whole subassembly moves with it. Now here, if I want to parameterize the position, I could drag the move tool to the proper reference, set up a ruler from the options over on the right to the necessary reference here, and then create a parameter with this icon next to the value. That will show up down in the lower right by clicking on this panel here, and clicking on groups and it will show that here where it could be renamed. For the last function of the move tool, let's go back into that cross section. You could actually easily do that by right clicking and say use last sketch plane and you're right back in the same section. Uh, you'll remember that there is not a hole here. Uh, I can show that a little better by right clicking on the bolt and hiding it and we can see that there is no hole over here. Now, what we could do is take the existing hole and actually copy it with the move tool. Uh, this is done by moving it, but by withholding the control key. If you hold the control key down and drag, it will make a copy. Now I have a second hole. The first hole is still there. I can then use the move tool with the up to command and pick on uh, our cylinder here. What I wanna do is hover over this and control scroll to it and then snap right to that face like that. We'll go ahead and show all and let's just use this in one more place. Uh, you'll actually notice on the right hand side of the model that bolt is missing. So if I want to copy this, uh, there's two ways that I can do that with the move tool. I could either triple click on it and copy the solid, but the new bolt will be independent. It will not be an instance, meaning it will not update with the others. If I want it to be an instance, I can use the select component button, and that makes it really easy to select this bolt. You'll notice, and I can orient my view from this little widget in the lower left here, that the move handle snaps to the center, which is really useful. I can pick the direction I wanna move it in, select up to, hold control, pick on the center of that hole, and in one action, it makes a copy and moves up to all at the same time. These commands can be used in a variety of areas on the model by elongating the part, making copies of blocks, and please feel free to try that out in some different areas. Thank you for watching, and please check out additional Getting Started tutorials and tutorials on the Move tool.